Well, hello everyone and welcome to an extremely big day of UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup racing. It's the finals day, it's Mont St. Anne and guess what, we have ourselves a mud race. Under 23 women on deck next after an absolute battle of wills in the under 23 men's. Getting ready to go here in Mont St. Anne. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth, I'm proud to say for this one, Bart Brenchins and special guest star, last one of the season, Leah Davis. And Leah, welcome aboard. You found somewhere dry? Yeah, this is the best place to be in the whole venue. <laughs> it's the only warm spot, I think. Bart, this one, anything could happen here, couldn't it? Yes, it uh, definitely will. Uh, we saw that uh, before in the, in the 23 men's race. And it's it's really cold outside. I just went out and it's still raining. You can it's see still wet. You can see by how many layers Madigan Monroe has arrived on the start row in just it gives you an idea. It's like the deck of an oil rig out there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I was just um, you know, waiting in line for the bathroom, saw a couple of these ladies also waiting in line and they're debating whether or not am I gonna wear a vest, am I gonna race with leg warmers? So that's when you know Park a jacket. Yeah, exactly. Should I should I park a jacket? <laughs> in the tech zone, you know, <laughs> instead of taking wheels, I'm going to take a jacket. So these are these are some tough racing conditions. Yeah, it's very difficult to, to stay warm as well, um, especially for, before the start when you get wet and during the race. Of course, when you ride uphill, it's OK, but all these downhills you cool down very quickly. Well, we've just seen Sophie Heavy Patterson make her way to the grid there. Feels like she needs a big performance to end this season on. Junior Kaluri, Tumas across young stars at Tuma squad extremely well versed in technical riding could well be in amongst it today she's taking off her base layer Noel Burry staying wrapped up yeah these are some last minute stressful outfit changes yeah Bart, like, Bart and I are familiar with those yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes they do Samara Maxwell I tell you, being brought brought onto the grid by that man, so, you know, there's experience, Tempier, Tempier in that camp, that will help on a day like this. Ronya Blurtlinger then, UCI World Cup overall title leader heading into this one. Blurtlinger leads that competition by 62 points ahead of Sophie Heavy Patterson, who's led it really all season and has seen that early season lead evaporate in front of her. Samara Maxwell just 85 points off Blurtlinger's lead as well. So, title coming down the wire in this one. There's your start list Blurtlinger, Maxwell, Burry, Kaluri, Patterson, Waite, Kira Baum, Monroe, Johnson, Holly Bova, the Czech Republic. Zoe Cuthbert, Sina Van Teel, Spetsna, Salvini Morgan, Halter, Wiedmann, Srenska, Shisinska, Doberman, Viktorova. Again, Bar, talent really, really deep through these ranks. Yeah, this uh, is a strong category too, if you compare our lap times from this category as well with the, uh, the, uh, with the elite riders. They're almost similar. Actually, I think Samara Maxwell, the world champion, how very strong. How impressed, Leah, have you been with Samara Maxwell this oh, season? Unbelievable. I mean, she came on into the season a little bit slower. I mean, I wouldn't say slower, <laughs> just <laughs> less fast. Yes. And then her, at the, her second half of the season, obviously after world champs, unbelievable. I mean, just riding that rainbow wave, really, of confidence. It just unlocked something, didn't it? Well, they're about to go under starters' orders here in Mont St. Anne, Quebec, the big one, the venue we've been flocking to for over 30 years of mountain bike racing drama. They're on the red lights. Soon they will go green and we will be underway. And we are go in Mont St. Anne, under 23 women's cross country Olympics. Samara Maxwell, the UCI world champion in the middle of your screen beside her. Sophie Heavy Patterson getting away. But there oh, is Ronya Blurklinger out front, leads them off the line and into the first turn out into the start loop. Yeah, and also for these riders, it's uh, first lap. A little bit to test out how everything feels, the grip. 
How the causes, the conditions. Really, really difficult, Leah, because if, if anyone's just tuning in, we've had a week of sunshine and beautiful autumn colors, and it's definitely not that today. Yeah, exactly like Bart was saying, they've trained in dry conditions all week, so they have not tested out this course with root rocks, you know, like the wet roots, the wet rocks. And um, as we saw in the U23 men's race just earlier, I think start position and the position on this first lap is everything. Because in a slippery it race is. like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, of course, if you uh, fight your rhythm and, and there's plenty of space to overtake, but normally after the start lap, yeah, the positions are there and it changes a little bit, but not dramatically. We've seen anymore. this a few times as well, Bart, as well, haven't we? And Sam Gay has mentioned it last week in Snowshoe that the safest place to be in a cross country race is out front. You don't have somebody else's crash. That, that's where you would like to be. But that's also very difficult. <laughs> well, obviously, difficult. you were pretty good at it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, have to, you, you have to have a good start. That's, uh, that's important. But also, it's, it's, it's an investment what you do as well. Like a UCI point, your start position, the UCI ranking. Um, yeah, the fastest rider are stay in front, and that's also what short track does. So a good short track means a good start position for the cross country race. So that's that's also why short track became so important for a good cross country race for a good what cross country a results. Shot this is as Sophie Heavy Patterson leaves them up over this climb. There is Samara Maxwell, the rider we mentioned earlier on, just to her right hand side. The Rock Rider Ford, freshly signed up. But it's also the first time that we see Ronja Blochling in the leaders' jersey in the cross country. Unbeaten I mean, in short track this season, Leo. Yeah, that's domination, yeah. isn't it? I don't, I don't know if I've seen that many times before in any of the categories to win. I think Nino had it Nino's twice. Oh, okay. Nino. Yes, well, of course. That's generally, that's generally the answer to most things cross country <laughs> stats related, it's always, isn't it? It's also Nino's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the go. Okay. So we could just assume that Nino has done it and to have a perfect. And they are oh. off and running at the top of this one. Already. That's the start. Ooh, move. Madigan Monroe down. Slipping. Blurtlinger leads them into this double. There's two line choices here. This is the line choice with uh, the river gap at the bottom. So the riders have now to take and to do it. The river gap feels a bit bigger than it did yesterday as well. Yeah, and also, do they will they be able to get enough speed in these slippery conditions to, you know, there's dabbing before the river gap. So is, yeah. will they have enough speed? You can see Madigan Monroe off her bike and running. Monroe looking really uncomfortable here in the U.S. National Champions jersey. Blurtlinger just cracking on out front, building herself a little lead already. Yeah, Ronja Blurtlinger. Just in the beginning of the race, had the riders even are still testing and finding the rhythm, how it feels, how slippy it is. There, Sophie Heavy Patterson. More carefully, the Dean. Mm. Samara Maxwell, the rainbow stripes. And this was before it got drenched overnight. This was already. A really, really tough Monty and Dan course, Leah. Yeah, this is a new course for this year, and it seems like they have strung in all together the most technical parts in one section, and then also all of the climbing in one bit. I was very surprised to see this. It's one main climb yeah, and they, one they, main they descent. They bring the riders even higher up than it has done before uh, here in Monty and Dan, and it, it always such a steep climbing here. It, yes. matter, it matters a little bit more, this place, doesn't it? It's got the pedigree, it's got the heritage, as I said, over 30 years we've been coming here racing and and it's like similar to the downhill track. There's no such thing as an easy Mont saint -Anne. No, Mont saint -Anne always delivers hard courses. If you can win here, you are and belong to the world's best riders. Yeah, I think Mount St. Anne um, historically is the most technical stop on the entire World Cup circuit and Obviously, this year it's delivering. It always rains here too. <laughs> like always last year, always. <laughs> always. <laughs> last year, uh, I mean, the elite women started, and it was sunny. It looked like a dry day, and then all all of a sudden, the skies opened up, and then of course Yolanda thriving in these conditions. We mentioned our journey on 23 men's race. There'll be certain riders who will be licking their lips ahead of this one. Well, there, Matthias Flukiger, another rider, loves the conditions, tough and technical. 
could see him start today as well. And the Elite Race is coming up later on this afternoon. But for now, it but is Ronja Blertlinger who's trying to pull a disappearing act out yep. the front. Noel Burry from Switzerland, second place. Burry's had a good second half of the year, Bart, as well, hasn't she? See Blertlinger just hanging the foot off on clips. Yeah, for this a little bit off camber corner, very fast corner, just before the finish line. Really, really soft going. This little punch of a climb back out towards the start finish area. Taxi, this part of uh, Monsenan, it's it's more sandy conditions it has instead of where the ski slopes are and where the big climb is. Yeah, there's different parts that absorb moisture differently, isn't more, there? More That's than it is on, it, yeah. on the other parts, yes, and also on this. Well, they're on the start loop, and you can see the effort. Blertlinger dipping herself down behind the bars, just changing the body position, cracking on. Yeah, she's on a mission to win that World Cup overall title. It's close and it's coming down to this final stop on the World Cup circuit. You have to take your hat off to Ronja Blurtling as well. She wellered the attacks of like, Sophie heavy Patterson's lead in that competition. It was huge at the start of the year. Then Samara Maxwell won the UCI World Championships and she was the rider to beat. And Blurtlinger has just been consistently there and put herself in the position to win this title today. Yeah, wondering where Samara Maxwell is actually. We haven't seen her yet. Well, I'm just checking our time and screens in the booth, and she's meh. top 10 across the line, and she's not in there yet. Oh, so wow. maybe problems for Samara yeah, Maxwell. Yeah, we saw her struggling on that first descent, but we have seen her riding. Yeah, outside the top 10, certainly for the time being, Samara Maxwell. We have seen her come through from deep in the pack at other races this year, so she That's might have to do that today on one of the most difficult courses we've faced. Probably Kofa on 10th place. There she is, just coming in the top of your screen oh, now. Samara Maxwell yeah, on the, the number three bike. And the UCI bike, champion stripes. But definitely something happened with her in that start loop. Yeah, I'm wondering if she crashed, potentially. I mean, the, the chances are high. She looks relatively clean, though. I mean, yeah. as, as clean as anyone does at this in this place. But <laughs> maybe she just got caught up in someone else's accident at a bottleneck yeah, somewhere and got yeah. held up. Yeah, at least she lost a lot of time in that start loop. Leah, this one will shock you. Bart admitted in the last one that he'd have enjoyed these conditions today. Would this, <laughs> would this have been your cup of tea? or? Actually, yes. I mean, I grew up about five hours away from here, so I really think it makes a difference if you've grown up riding conditions like this because it's not too often that we have a complete mud show, right, in yeah. a World Cup, and you need to have this kind of riding somewhere deep in your bones, right? <laughs> and we said and that anyway. to, You have to need to have, need to have the experience with tires, with uh, yeah, get off and on your bike again all the time, finding your rhythm and also riding in conditions like these. Yeah, as we if saw, you never have done it, yeah, you, you never get used to it. Riley Amos, as well as he rode on the climbs, you could see that he was just planted and comfortable on those descents as yeah. well, and that's what makes a difference. Well, Ronja Blertlinger up this absolutely thankless switchback climb that is, she's going to be really struggling for grip out there as it continues to get churned up the really, really soft earth of this new section of track. Soaked overnight, there's Noel Burry just joining her at the bottom of that climb now. Yeah, you can see Rania actually looking on the, like she is looking to go on the outside of the trail. So she is Soft just night. searching for grip here. And yeah, sometimes running is way faster than trying to ride and dab up a climb. If you just commit to the run early, it ends up being faster at times in conditions like this. Yep. Again, she's committing to the run. Yeah, yeah, you have to be a, a, a good runner too. Eh? I mean, if you don't like to run or walk, but uh, almost <laughs> running is almost not not possible because of the steepness of that climb. We saw, yeah, we saw Riley Amos uh, in the last the youth on the 23 men's race. We talked about it, Bart, didn't yeah. we? That it's a real skill from cyclocross. Is that that awareness of when you should be off the bike and running with it, as opposed to persisting and I mean these modern mountain bikes really low gear they can get up really really steep things but if you're just spinning your legs and not going forward that quickly you may as well be on foot yeah exactly and you could see you know that pack of three with Madigan Monroe two of them were running one was riding and they're pretty much going the same yeah. pace but when they reach the crest of that climb and get back on the runners are way less recovered there so is that's Samara Maxwell sorry to drop you Leah she's 
Back further down the pack. I'm just trying to find her in our timing screens in the booth. She's 23rd at the minute, Samara Maxwell, the UCI world champion. Having a torrid time of it by the look of it as well. Yeah, but I agree with that, uh, Leah. That if you are able to ride your bike, you are at the end, you are faster. Yeah, because that's yeah. what we train, right? <laughs> we train on the bike. We are yeah. not runners, although today it might be helpful. Listen, yeah, listen, yeah, listen you, can be the, you can be the best yeah. runner in the world if you put a pair of those cross-country race <laughs> shoes with carbon fiber soles on them and have to run up a muddy hill. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, but look at this section here, oh. just so churned up. Yeah, and also here, Ronja Blocklinger, she's looking for some uh, grip on the side where the grass still is. Well, very just the same. Bart, how difficult is it? We talked, you know, about that we talked this season about how every lap you try and aim for marks and lines that you're trying to take and things you're aiming for and little markers and whenever conditions are like this and you can't always be on the line you want to be, how does it change it? Yeah, you have to be very flexible also in your mind. Uh, you you try out also different lines and training. For, of course, it was only dry the last few uh, days. So, but then still riders, they have in mind, if it's wet for Sunday, yeah, we'll try and find out uh, B lines or the, the slower lines, more outside, how that feels, what, what kind of terrain over there is. Yeah, you have to be very well prepared for a good race on Sunday. Or that's such a good point. I, you have to be flexible. I mean, everyone is going to make mistakes in these conditions. And if you let those mistakes get in your head, and kind of bog you down, that's going to be a problem. So you can have the best plan here, and it goes out the window, especially when it starts raining overnight. And I, when I coach my riders, I just say, keep moving forward. It doesn't matter what happens. If you're running, if you're riding, just keep moving forward. And we can see this is what our leader is doing right Look here. Look at this through here. And also, yeah, be smart. Huh? Don't be stupid and just like these, oh. these sections of here, oh. very slippery at the moment. You can hear the squeal of the brake pads trying to summon up some kind of adhesion on the discs. Blurtlinger, a long afternoon awaits. But, crucially, she's in the lead. Oh, she yeah, looks running too. Sliding. There's Madigan Monroe. Third place. Third, third place at the minute after that. Tough Ooh. start. 30 seconds back off the lead, Monroe now. You see, she's using a lot of her rear brake, but also it means immediately the rear wheel is sliding too much. Yep, descending on a mountain bike, all about what the front wheel's doing. The back wheel can do it at once to an extent, but you want that front wheel to grip. Yeah, you can see these riders searching for the patches where they can brake. It's not ideal to brake on the roots, on the rocks, your, your wheel's gonna slide. And so if you can just find those patches. It's a big where, just, it's it a is. big just in that <laughs> sentence, yeah. Yeah, highlighted just. <laughs> um, and try to let go of the brakes as you go over a technical section like this, right? The, you keep way more traction. And the bridge, that has skateboard tape on it, right? So that's a great place to check your speed before these technical sections. Well, what are we seeing Whoa. here? Something went wrong with Ronja Blockinger before. Noelle, Ner Noelle Burry, she was leading. So she has overtaken uh, Ronja Blockinger somewhere, what we didn't see. Burry back on the bike now, having carried it for some distance. Chaos reigns in mont -Saint anne At least these are the numbers one and two in the race. I'm not surprised it's Swiss, two Swiss riders. No, I they, mean, no. they're used to conditions like these yes. too. Yeah, also, and, and also, of course, very strong at the moment. And to yeah, you have to be fit, of course, and on a day like today, have the technical skills. It was like this for the Tokyo Olympic race in 2021, and the Swiss women swept the podium. So they, took, they, they spent a lot of time with them in skate parks, even, and you know pump tracks and really just nailing down the basics of going fast on a bike. The Swiss team so technically strong, but this place, absolutely no respecter of <laughs> reputations, nationalities, anything. There's Madigan Monroe and Ferd. See, yeah. is it more dangerous to ride or run down these descents? Well, we saw Carter Woods have this big oh, Blurtlinger oh, trials in her way oh. into that bit. Oh, you can hardly oh watch it run, your Blurtlinger. Yeah, we have seen the crash of Carter Woods here on this part yeah. of the course, and luckily it, it didn't go wrong so far. For now Burry oh, yeah, now into the lead. Blurtlinger, as you say, Leah, the key is just to keep moving forward. 
Yeah, she might be lucky that she didn't slide with her foot when it was on the ground for the first time, because when that goes away too, then she definitely had a nasty crash. I would also choose this outer left yeah, line. Outside. Yeah, outside. Yeah, you have... Takes a bit more time, but, but it's so much wrong. more safe. Yes. Yeah, if you're on the bike, it's worth it. Yeah, and it doesn't, as we saw with Carter Woods, I mean, it drops off that yeah, rock. So yeah, if it's, it's, you crash, it's quite the fall. Yeah, Carter Woods, that was a big, big smash. It was good to see him up and moving around on the podium, even if it was a bit gingerly. Crashed right at the top of that rock section that we saw Ronja Blurtlinger just battling with a second ago. Blurtlinger now putting a few bite lengths into Bury, so I think this one will go back and forth for a while yet. Yeah. I think Madigan Monroe is not that far off. Yeah, I She's agree. She's on third place with what I saw in that previous shot. She She's having a great ride. What was your wettest Mont St. Anne, Leah? You must have been yeah. in a few mudders here over the years. I mean, I've been racing here for, I mean, I'm going to say my age right now, but <laughs> over 20 years, right? So Mount St. Anne was my first World Cup that I've ever done. So I've had many muddies. And you came back for more. Yes, That's I remarkable. Did. And when was that? When was your first um, Mount St. Anne? I believe that was in 2002. And so this is before there was an U23 category. So I had jumped from the junior category, racing world, in 2001 and then here we go I'm, I'm straight into the elite category yeah it's it's quite the transition i had two course previews right here and that was enough and they were only one lap <laughs> long each absolutely harrowing the second one i was actually on an enduro bike with big tires loads of grip loads of suspension it wasn't any easier <laughs> that's the choice though i think <laughs> yeah it would definitely be through here for me today big bike big brakes but these cross-country racers on the super lightweight machines looking for grip wherever they can. Bart, Lu Louisa tires. Doberman. Yeah, yeah Doberman looking good. Um, Setup-wise, mud tires, suspension, are you doing anything with that for the team? Or Yeah, mud tires, definitely. Yeah, uh, I just spoke with the, the riders, the men in the 23, and uh, one of them was, yeah, he was still on, uh, like, let's say, dry weather tires. And he said, absolutely. For the first two laps, it was still okay, but then it was... Very bad, uh, absolutely mud tires. You see the rain sheeting in from the side of the shot there. It's absolutely tipping it down here on the banks of the St. Lawrence River. And they said as well, it's a very muddy course and it's very slippy and that's also what we can see on screen. Yeah, so Bart, those, that decision is for the climbs, right? Because it's very mucky and so the tires will shed also for the root, rooty downhills. Yeah, I mean, on, on these rocks and roots, yeah, actually a mud tire doesn't do that much more yeah. than a dry weather tire does. But for the grip on the, on, the, on the climbs, yeah, it was way more muddier than we thought it should be. Yeah. Of course, on, on paths like this, yeah, but that's just only a little bit of the course, yeah, you can ride every tire, but especially on these climbs, you can make the difference. And yeah, if you can actually stay on the bike, and and be spinning that wheel and Again, get some traction. A big if. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big if there, given the conditions out there today. So Ronya Blurtlinger leads her compatriot Noel Burry at the front list with Madigan Munro is third, then another Swiss rider, Monique Holter, then Sina Van Til, the German in fifth currently. Just to give you an update on Samara Maxwell's progress, she's in 14th now, so need to start stringing laps together. There's 10th place currently for Sophie Hebby Peterson. So Blurtlinger with that slender lead in the UCI World Cup overall title race at the finals here in Mont Saint Anne. Currently the best of the favourites for that one. So I'm wondering where Maxwell is at the moment. Maxwell's in 14th, 14th currently, yeah. Sorry, correction, 12th. Yeah, I think there went something wrong with her in that uh, start loop. Maybe she has changed her tires, but we haven't seen. Maybe the wheels could be. Yeah, if she it was the wrong choice at the start. She seemed to be moving under her own steam and sort of not looking too dirty. You can see the, the tread profile on those mud tires there. Uh, mud tires on wet rocks are unpleasant at best. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Samara, I was also thinking the same thing, Bart, is did she have the wrong tire choice? And so immediately uncomfortable. Yes, and, and maybe in the first tech feed that she changed her wheels could be. And that takes a little bit of time. It looks like she's on her move. They're, they're a difficult thing. Generally, I always find as a concept mud tires in mountain bike racing because, yes, there's going to be mud. 
So it's going to be generally on most mountain bike rides, lots of route and lots of rock, which they do not like and they will not grip over. So yeah. it's kind of a, all your eggs in one basket in terms of grip choices, but there you can see the eyes. And, see, blurt and see the rain. There's still a lot of rain. This is why I would might maybe choose a different tire for the front versus the rear, right? Yeah. So if it's very muddy, I would maybe go with a mud tire on the rear to have that grip on the climbs, but more of something that's gonna do better on the front with the ro roots and rocks. Different uh, choices of lines here. Yeah. Not good, look Locking good for and Noel Burry, so not taking the road gap of the river gap. That looked good for Burry through there to me. She's currently four seconds adrift off the race leader. There is the race leader, Ronja Blertlinger for Live Factory Racing. Teammates, of course, uh, to Carter Woods from the Giant Factory Off-Road team. There's Ginya Kaluri, is it? No, sorry, correction. No, it's Halter it is. It's Halter, Monique sorry. Halter. I'm used to seeing that kit and uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's Ginya. Monique Halter it is. There's that big rut forming Whoa. at the base of that tree. Whoa. Over the river gap, big pull. Barely <laughs> making it. I mean, that's what I was saying. You need to have the speed. Yeah. And if you slow too much, you slow down too much because that's... Uh, uh, Ginia Calori. Full commitment. Ginia Calori in sick for the minute back on her own bike this week. Yeah, she was on a... She was on a borrowed bike last yeah. week because the airline lost it oh on her. Yeah, oh my so goodness, that's a nightmare. She has managed to get back on her own bike. It doesn't seem to slow her down too much in Snowshoe, West <laughs> yeah. Virginia. Hey, maybe that's a good luck bike. Maybe she's not on Maybe, <laughs> maybe. It was, uh, and that's or, also what mountain biking is. Eh? If, you, if your bike is not there because of some t t travel problems, you can have one, uh, you can borrow a bike from someone else, another team. Yeah, That's, uh, super good to see that. How they work together. Yeah, it's the community, really. It's a nice community. In amongst the uh, the pro teams, plenty of respect and camaraderie. It is a big traveling village, and we have come to the last stop of the season here in Mont St. Anne. And it's this woman, Ronja Blertlinger, who leads the race for the under 23 UCI World Cup. 12 seconds to Noel Burry. Madigan Monro, 20 seconds. Very looking strong here. Looking like she's getting the wriggle on. Yeah. And th these are not big gaps. I mean, this can change with one mistake of the rider. So buckle up. I mean, we're really going to have some yeah. exciting racing the entire day. And we are seeing what the two of you mentioned at the start of the broadcast about the importance of that start to be fast, to be safe, to yeah. be out there. Yeah. And they've now found their space and they can actually, they've got room to ride their bikes and ride the lines they want to. As Ronja Blurtlinger on clips again. Yeah, we see that again, how she did it in the previous lap. Similar, to have a little bit more grip and be prepared when it goes wrong. What was your best wet weather race part? I always love uh, uh, bad Do you have a favorite? Which was your favorite? Oh. Actually, so many I, favorites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had my best races in the rain, to be honest. Really? Yeah. And is that, do you think a lot of that's psychological? Because you know everyone else is going to... Yeah, I was struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Once I remember um, Schladming, it was in Austria. Schladming, it's wet. Do you remember there, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then, yes. And there, 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 when, it's, when it's wet, there you have really clay. Yeah, and really soft a ground. Lo a lot of yeah, a lot running parts in it, some steep sections. But I was strong in running, too. <laughs> oh, and would you have trained for running? Would you have like? I did. Yeah. I, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Monroe closing the gap to Burry in front of her, looking really, really strong, Leah. Wow. Yeah, this is an unbelievable. Well, I would say believable ride for Madigan Monroe, and she is close here. And she also has a lot of experience with cyclocross, so she that she helps. has yes, yeah. she has that feeling of okay, this is going to be faster running versus riding, and you can conserve energy if you're also tense and nervous about these conditions. You're exhausted yeah, by the end will, of the race. It will stress you the whole time. Yeah, you're just, you have kind of a death grip on the bars. And I'm sure a lot of these women, they were watching the U23 race, and to see Carter Woods crash on that rock, it's almost not good, you know? Yeah, like you don't want to see any of that. Yeah, you're a little bit more tense going into a race, like, oh, this is going to be rough. It's interesting as well, in the wet, you do tend to, to balance yourself on the brakes a bit more as well. That can generate arm pump that goes up for the upper body as well and there's a different sort of set of demands riding in the wet 
but definitely we will see riders, especially in a man elite category. There's Samara Maxwell, sorry to interrupt you, Bart. She is Already currently in seventh. Up wow. in seventh then, so Samara, uh, Samara Maxwell goes past yeah, Emily Johnson. She's on a move to the front. Bart likes what he sees here from the UCI World Champion. Can yeah. she keep this momentum going? Yeah, I think so. I don't know what went wrong. It's definitely something went wrong, but she wasn't. She is still not covered in mud, so I don't. I don't think yes. a crash was involved. It's that. so it's, hard to see, but I mean, it's usually the sleeves give it away. If the sleeves are dirty, people have been down. But both those uh, white arm warmers look yeah. pretty clean to me. Yeah, we would know. Yeah. <laughs> that World Champ jersey was yeah. dirty, right? Yeah, yeah. I, if anyone can bridge these gaps, I mean, she's already bridged a huge gap. Oh, and she did. It oh, in. she did before. Yes, yeah. yes. She's still able. I mean, it's it's still a long race. If you're going to have a problem, have one. it on lap one. Yeah. And then you've got the rest of the race to make it up. Isn't that the case? Madigan Monroe from the USA then heads no. oh, into second, second place. place. Yeah. We saw that she was coming. And now already on second place. Wow, Maddie, saving, seconds. saving the best for last. 15 seconds, yeah, probably buoyed by that win of Riley Amos. Yeah, and Bjorn Riley, he was strong too. Yeah. US riders, the youngsters. Yeah, success breeds success. If you see a friend you know, who you've grown up racing with have one of the best races of his life, you're, and you're team, motivated. And the team spirit too. Exactly. There's definitely... Uh, Definitely a noticeable step change with the the young American racers coming through, Leah. Can you tell us more about that? Is that just a bit more organization and investment in that structure? or? Yeah, we are making big strides. It's very exciting, a time for USA Cycling. We, again, it's, it's a great group. They work together. They really feed off of each other's energy and technical skills. And most importantly, they collaborate with each other. And it's because that next, that future generation, I mean, the generation that has arrived now, Kate Courtney, Sevilla Blanc, Haley Batten, Gwendolyn Gibson, um, Christopher Blevins, you know, they've had success. And all of those riders take the time to meet these younger riders, mentor them. So um, that makes a huge difference. Certainly does. We've seen it in the Swiss system for years. We moved up to Nino Scherter at the start of the year, and he said whenever he came through, it was really the, the great Christoph Souser and Frischi that worked with him. And he says it's now an important thing that I have to do is to talk to the younger Swiss riders as well, whilst obviously beating all of them at the same time. <laughs> not, not, tell, not telling them too much. Well, and it's also important that if you see your fellow, fellow countrymen or women, um, win a World Cup, win the World Championships, you think, I can do this too. You know, you almost have to see it to believe it. And yep. that really happens in mountain bike racing. Samara Maxwell basically horizontal now, getting that rock rider up the hill. And you can see the chain, how it's the smallest gear she mm. is yeah. shifting and still not light enough to make it on but these sections. But you can see what she's pushing the front wheel through there. It's just peanut butter mud at the minute. Just really impossible to get traction. The riders behind her off and running. On her bike again. This also shows how steep this climb is, right? The camera flattens it out the pitch, but she is pretty much having to lay on that top tube to push this yeah. bike up this climb. Tough, tough day in the office for Samara Maxwell. She's got some work to do, but she's in seventh at the minute now. And that is one minute 39 off Ronya Blertlinger, who leads this race ahead of that woman, Madigan Monroe. Ooh. Maddie closing down a couple of seconds. Yep. Now it's 12 seconds. And she looks strong in the descents too. Very technical. I think I just saw on that track bike a different color sidewall on the tire on the front than the back. So maybe she's uh, gone with your advice, Leah, and gone with the, the mud tire on the front. I was sending her those thoughts telepathically. <laughs> mud, <laughs> race. mud tire vibes, yeah. <laughs> Look at that up there, though. Wow. Petronia looking strong here on this climb. Off the bike and running to the top. And as I say, Bart, fair play to Ronya. She's hung in there this season. She's been the most consistent, hasn't she? And also so strong in the uh, short track where she took a lot of points with her to cross country standings as well. Goes to show how important they are. It is, yeah. Short track, it belongs to cross country racing. It's part of it, it's start positions, it's points. What an exciting addition to, to the World Cup circuit. I mean, it. It's way better to have two racing stops versus yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And it's exciting. It's so exciting. 
It's, I mean, we saw the, the short track races here this weekend. You couldn't have picked a winner in any of them. Yeah, it's I think the, the men's it's a short nightmare track race. It's a nightmare for a commentator, <laughs> but... <laughs> for, our, for our battle. For our battle, yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> but um, no, absolutely, just mountain bike racing at its best, really, bar to bar. Lots of big characters in the mix. I mean, we're in a golden generation of cross-country racers. Actually, do we, do we get a podium too tonight after, uh, man, I'm, after I'm, all our uh, predictions? I've told you, I am staying in here all day. I'm going to be dry and comfortable in here all day. I'm not going out in that podium for the rain. But probably you are not, uh, you are not one of the well, podium well, I don't titles. know. It's I've got a problem with that predictor thing where I keep on thinking that I have predicted the winners and I've actually got nowhere near them, but they it's, see. So, it's so difficult all the time. It's a difficult time to be predicted anything in mountain bike racing at the minute. All formats have got such big names doing incredible things. We see Blurtlinger just balancing that live down there nicely. Took that big rock on there Ooh. and got it smoothly. Madigan Monroe doesn't matter if you keep moving forward. But she's going fast, has the she, skills. She really is. I mean, we saw Ron here, like, dab, have her foot out, and Madigan stayed on the bike. Yeah, so you yeah. can always yeah. see, already see that makes a difference. But yeah, no, now she's, she's off. off the bike. Yeah, but I think it is, doesn't cost her that much time. Yeah. Of course, a little bit of a mistake, yeah. Off her bike, running. We can't fail to mention that the, these extremely technical descents come at the top of one of the longest climbs yeah. on the World Cup circuit. Oh, it's horrific. So they're cross-eyed. They're having to put out even <laughs> more power in this mud, in this peanut butter mud. Oh, and now Maddie, it looks like she's yeah. closing. She does, even when she's walking that section over there. What's the key to that, Leah, then? Is it just, is it knowing your lines that well that you can tip into them and know that you can kind of recover and get a breath on them? Yeah, I think it's looking for the spots to recover. Now we see that Madigan chooses to run down this descent, so that should cost her a little bit of time, but not as much time as if she were to crash. Yeah, or stall, or get get just pointed the wrong way and have to bring the bike back onto the line. Exactly, so it will be interesting to see the gap after this descent. Um, yeah, so again, it's just choosing these places where you're going to recover and on the pre-ride of the course. And on that long climb, there's about two flat sections that last probably five seconds. And you just take a moment to take a breath. And especially before these descents, like deep breath, relax. Just tipping it in there, Blurtlinger. Yeah, Bart, we heard from Pauline ferran earlier in the year that the first three or four laps she does of any track, she just rides the B lines. She rides the lines that she knows that she's not gonna ride in a race because that means that whenever she's forced onto them, whether it's wet weather or whether it's being in traffic, yeah, she knows see, them. Yeah, we see it more often of her that she's not uh, taking the, the most difficult part of the course. Um, and also, yeah, she's not one of the youngest anymore, but it seems to me that it's still fast enough for her to win races. Yeah, Pauline ferran missing this weekend. Was due to race the UCI Gravel Worlds, but unfortunately had to pull out of that as well due to COVID. We hope she's uh, feeling a bit better and look forward to seeing her next year. Blurtlinger, 14 seconds now ahead of Monroe. Yeah, the last gap actually showed Madigan Monroe at nine seconds, and now it's back out to 14. So things can change at the drop of a hat. It's a so fickle quickly. thing, a, mo a mud race, isn't <laughs> yes. it? One mistake can just be so time consuming. No gap is safe, I think, no. in conditions like this. Yeah, but Madigan Monroe, she's still in touch. I think 15 seconds, uh, she, she still can see when you're blocking on front of her on, uh, on many parts of the course. And that's what she knows as well. So she will stay in touch. And when it comes down to the last laps, taking a bit more risks, maybe, when it comes down to a, a victory. Bart, how much prep uh, in terms of the team structure with your own do you do if you know that you're riding the dry track all week, but you know that the rain is coming? Is yeah. that something you prep for? Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we, it's a topic we're talking about constantly, but also <laughs> yesterday. I mean, all the spare wheels we, we, we set up already with mud tiles, uh, with an insert in it as well. And yeah, it, it costs a lot of time to prepare everything for two different conditions, actually. Because yeah, you didn't know exactly how the course should change and how, how the course should be. 
But the, the riders, would they change their prep at all for a mud race, or is it just staying warmer for longer? Is that the key? I think it's just mentally prepping uh, more than anything. And of course, on the pre ride, riding every single line, that's something that I encourage always the younger athletes to do. And they don't do it often. They're so excited. They don't, they just go and send every section of the course and they don't ride it and stop and look. So, really taking the time to look at all the options and think, yeah, this is my plan. I'm going to take this wide line if it rains because it's Especially, safer. I think this year, the, the, the courses are different designed than before. Yeah. The, the, the taping is much wider, there are much more options for yes. the riders and more difficult actually to do your. Your, your, yeah, your training on the course because there are plenty of options sometimes and sometimes the riders complaining about yeah I, I have to ride more laps because there are more options. I love this kind of course design I because like it, too. it takes creativity right? Yes, it you, is. Ne you need to have that vision to see the different lines and it and takes time yeah and it takes experience and yeah, it's just an element of creativity that's brought to mountain bike racing that you don't see very often. Usually it's one line yep. in yep. a World Cup. This is the fastest, this is the, this is the one everyone's taking. And when I walked this course last night, actually in the dark, I thought, how cool is this? There are so <laughs> many different lines. And you I'm walking shy. in the dark? Yes, with my, with my <laughs> phone flashlight, because <laughs> I was so excited to see it. And I'm like, oh, there's a line, there's a line. So yeah, it's just, um, I love a course design like this. I, it's very natural. Yeah, yeah and it is. It reminds me of Lenzer Heide, except for the pitch is way steeper, right? So There's you can... just a constant gradient the whole way yes. around here, isn't there? You're never really on the flat or recovering. It feels like you're always doing that or that. Yeah, and it is relentless. I mean, you get, again, you get to the top of these climbs and you're going right into it. Oh, there's Mad Madigan Monroe in the same shot. So she has a World Cup win in her crosshairs right yeah. now. You can't see it at home, but anytime Madigan Monroe comes in the shot, Leah visibly <laughs> <laughs> sits pulled up right and takes notice. <laughs> This is very exciting for me. I mean, all all World Cup racing has been so exciting. The fields are so it's been competitive. A great year. Yeah, it's been a great year, and it's such a long season that I think, how do you set it up? What do you peak for? Do you have two peaks? You, I think we saw a lot of riders taking a rest mid-season, building back up to Worlds in the end of the season, and we're seeing some of the riders that were in the front at the beginning of the season really running on fumes. Yeah, we had a really strong start to the year, the UCI World Cup, and then we had a really good UCI World Championships, Glentress Forest, that was full of intrigue as well. And the back end of the season, whenever you've got titles on the line, two really strong tracks to finish on, Snowshoe, Mont St. Anne, the weather today, it has been a bit of a classic. Yeah, but definitely uh, like a summer break we had, where riders have been on altitude training or taking a little bit of time off. But uh, of course, yeah, also national championships, nice. Europeans, uh, yeah, we had in Europe. Still a lot of races went on in that summer break. Blurtlinger nails that river crossing, as does Madigan Monroe. Well, they're just giving it a little bit of extra hope to make it over that gap. It's actually quite a big gap. It's much bigger than it looks on yeah, TV. Yes. Yes. But if, you, if you stay next to it, it's like two meters wide at yeah. least. It feels like the, the two out front at the minute, they're really finding their lines and being confident. Sina Van Tiel, Germany, yep. fifth place. Genia Colori, and then we have Sammy Maxwell. So Sammy Maxwell is on to the back wheel of Genia Colori, then so that's sixth and seventh on your screen at the minute. Colori in the red is one minute 43 back off the leader, but looking like she's about to be passed by Maxwell. A blurtlinger. That's the problem when you've got a rider with the firepower of Sammy Maxwell in the field. You kind of know that they will come back to you. You need to get a scamper on out front whenever you've got the clear air to do it. Sammy Maxwell, look at the gear she's turning to get up there. Ginny Kaluri's off and tripoding on her way up there. I know the Canadian Federation used to call it their closing riders, their closers, right? They're closers. And I, I was always a closer. I would maybe not have the best start, um, kind of like Mona Mittawalter, and then I would get faster and faster as the race uh, moved on. Is, so, that, is that just a natural physiological thing? Is that just something that's in you as an athlete? Is it Because I know Mona 
it's very open that she's like yeah. I'm just not good at the start. I am just not but aggressive enough. I think it has enough. to do also with her training. Yes. Yeah. I think it's a combination of both, of right? Yeah, maybe a combination. We yeah. all have strengths and weaknesses. I was more also more of an endurance rider, and so I needed to work on that start. And mentally, it's hard to go full gas at the beginning of a 90-minute effort, right? It takes some risk physically. This is why you see some riders on the last lap all the sudden yeah. have a great lap, and it's like, well, how much is oh, left? Oh, it's a crash oh, into the river goes wrong, you Blurtlinger. No, no, it's not Ronja Blurtlinger. Sorry, no, excuse no, no. me. It's not, sorry, excuse it's, uh, me. I thought it was Blurtlinger just as we jumped the shot. I saw the red jersey. Oh, that was a rough crash. Whoa, that oh, yeah, was Ophelia Grandmont. Leaving. Excuse me, I thought it was Blurtlinger. Just I caught the red in the corner of my eye, but she's she's thankfully not in the river. She's tramping on at the front of this one, but... And that's how quick it get, can go wrong. Yes. I mean, you have to be concentrated constantly everywhere, even on the easier parts of the course. Exactly, Bart. This is exactly what I was thinking. You can t have the tendency to relax after you've made it through those <laughs> crazy... Uh, Maybe here, there's features. a little bit of yes. time to relax. But <laughs> okay, that's the only can, part. You can take a deep breath on the pavement for about a hundred meters and that's about Blurlinger, it. You can see just having her eyeballs sandblasted out there at the minute. Two more laps to go. Two to go. Madigan Munro, what is the clock going to say? 15 seconds then. Yeah. Let's keep an eye on wow. that one. Looking She's good. She's taking her gel. Looked angry there. A little bit of anger goes a long way in this sport. <laughs> Maybe it's she's cold. Yeah. <laughs> cold and motivated. No. Yeah, that, yeah, it is. Actually, lap time's more like the same. They don't increase Similar that lap much. Times, yeah, 17.08, 17.10. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Madigan Monroe, 17.08, 17.08. Two Tra times. Track Factory exactly race. the same lap time. Track Factory racing, though, between Evie Richards, Riley Amos. He landed Neff up on the podium last weekend. Now Madigan Monroe. I mean, they'd race again tomorrow, wouldn't they? That team is just going through the gears. Sadly, we will be missing Evie Richards Evie. from the elite women's race, but they're really on a high track factory racing at the minute. Yeah, I look at the elite women's field and a lot of their social media posts and everyone's like, I'm feeling sick. I'm feeling <laughs> empty. So it's yeah, just it's the the make season. it to the end of the season yeah, with the yeah. wheels on the bus. <laughs> But it is amazing. I mean, the two of you have been in some of the biggest teams going, and whenever that confidence is in the camp, it lifts everyone, doesn't it? Uh, it oh, does. Yeah. yeah, but also, the, I mean, the whole team is more motivated. It's good for the staff people as well, for everyone. And yeah. That, that energy brings yeah, brings such a good uh, atmosphere. It makes it's such a difference. Seen a fan teal for Lex Wear Mountain Bike Team cross the line in fifth place, having a strong ride, strong the German. Ride. As it's Halter in fourth. Oh, there we go. Samara Maxwell, sixth place. So Samara Maxwell has gone past Junior Kaluri, and she's now distancing herself from her, moving forward. Yeah, the same, more like the same gap. One minute, 43 seconds. In sixth place, Sammy Maxwell. Bart, what would you think about Samara Maxwell and her technical skills, right? She's newer on this World Cup circuit versus some of these Swiss riders that have been doing Swiss Cups for years. Yeah, actually, I don't know exactly uh, why we haven't seen that much of her in the previous years, but certainly she's there and she has the skills. She's very strong on the climbs. Definitely, she's a very strong climber, but also she has the skills. You've seen her... Uh, yeah, performing on the most difficult courses of uh, the, the circuit and also in these conditions uh, I think she made something she, something went wrong in, the, in that first start loop because now the lap times are more like I the think same. we saw yeah we saw a lot of riders getting caught up on the climbs whenever riders in front yeah, of them would have problems be. and yeah. maybe just caught in traffic Samara Maxwell at the start of this one she's 143 back now off this woman Ronja Blertlinger for the Live Factory race and the Swiss rider who Closing in on the UCI World Cup overall title. I mean, a tough day at the office, but it may well end in champagne for Blurtlinger if she can keep this going. There's Madigan Munro, the woman hunting her down. 23 seconds back off the lead, so that gap has gone out, Leah. I can't believe I'm saying this in a mountain bike World Cup, but Madigan Munro looks like she's running faster than <laughs> from your <Blurtlinger. laughs> A little bit more peppy, 
which she can just, make all the difference she, here. She did cycle cross in Winterthur, isn't it? Yeah, so it makes sense. She has probably a quicker leg turnover. I'm usually talking about cadence, but now I'm talking about running here today <laughs> at Mount St. Anne. Mount St. Anne. It and was ooh. never going to be an easy place to finish the year, but these athletes off and running on some of the slickest climbs we've seen this season. And you could see that was a pro mount and dismount. That's straight up cyclocross from Madigan Monroe. So yeah, not everybody can do these things. Yes. They have the skills to do it. Huh? That's nice to see. Yeah, it's a skill. It's it's and that second can add up, right? When it does. It's, when we're talking about a 15 second gap, oh, it's always you can use trees are your friends sometimes. Yeah, the so trees are your friends. I was never afraid to get a little push off of a tree. We always say grass is your best friend. Grass. For, for, for more traction, huh? Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing more fun than riding up a wet grassy hill. That's just miserable. I don't know if there's any grass left on this course. No, <laughs> that might not a whole lot of it. But I mean that well, yeah, you're right. Van Til. That camera shot really flattens that climb. It's oh. absolutely soul sapping. Yeah, they're in their easiest gear and these gears, it, there's such a full range now. Yeah, you can uh, see that the, the, the rear wheel is sliding all the time and you have to find your grip, your traction. That's, that's so Maxwell. difficult. If you're pushing too hard, you're just sliding and it doesn't move forward. Exactly, Bart. It takes a little bit of finesse, yes, right? You yes, can't yeah. mash, mash, no, mash. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, you have to be spinning a full pedal stroke. Yeah, and even sometimes a little bit of a bigger gear will help. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, especially oh. in these technical sections. Blurtlinger off again. Yeah, it's a really tough one because we've talked about it in the last one, Bart, didn't we? That forward momentum's essential oh. as well. Three, three seconds faster, uh, Medigan Monroe Ross, in the previous lap. So, yeah, you can see there for yourself, Monroe putting, putting a bit of time into Ronja Blurtlinger on that last lap, but the two of them have been on and off the bikes on this climb, but it's really in these descents where they both seem to be doing the damage over the rest of the field. 38 seconds back now, Noel Burry in third place. Usually in World Cups, I say races are not won, but they can be lost on the descents. But today is different. I mean, they can definitely yeah. be won here. I today think we on saw descents. Riley Amos did a large chunk of his win on those descents because he was just absolutely like it was his local trails just yeah, but on the other hand, I mean, them. Carter Woods lost his race yeah. in the descents. Yeah. I, would, I, mean, yeah. I, I would say he didn't take too much risk, but yeah, it went wrong. It's a horrible, horrible crash from Carter Woods. It's one of those oh. ones that you know that you'll wake up in the middle of the night reliving in your head and just sort of bolt upright. But you can see how churned up that climb is getting underneath Madigan Monroe safely up there. There's that cadence we talked about. That is peanut butter mud. I yeah, mean, and even yesterday they prepared the course a little oh, bit. They put some, some more gravel on it, but it didn't help at all. Yeah. Blurtlinger just a bit of a problem at the bottom of that climb then. Got the wrong side of that tree and we'll have to get back up to speed again. She's off the bike again. It's annoying to ride on the side. You just can't, <laughs> even if you are leading a race, yes. you can see her expression, her body language. You just can't get any flow, bar. No, no, not at nothing. And also, this is when the fatigue is starting to set in. So you can oh. see her, oh, Maddie's running. So running she's fast down. on foot. Yeah. yeah, this may be the call. I mean, she's going to have bruises all over her legs tomorrow morning. <laughs> Just because you're running, the pedal's yeah, hitting the pedal's you. Hitting, yeah. You're doing whatever it takes to close that gap. Whoa. Blurtlinger, front end of that bike, <laughs> wanted nothing to do with that, but she got it down it. Oh, it gets really slippery. They're really slippery. There are, so, there are roots covered in mud. You almost can't see them if you're riding. What? And also in between the roots, the, 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 the soil is all gone. Yeah, Samara Maxwell, so I just interrupt you guys. Samara Maxwell is up into fifth position wow. now. So it's a minute 47 off the front, but Maxwell's coming. She hasn't got a whole lot of race to play with yet, but riding her way towards the podium. The UCI world champion from New Zealand. This looks good yep. for Madigan Monroe. Yeah. I'll tell you what, what a set of elite races we are in for later oh. on this afternoon. <laughs> this is going to be... Can I change my predictions? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I haven't made one yet. This is exciting. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make a prediction after you've seen the track. That's not how this game works. We always have to make the predictions so early in the week. Yeah, it's, we do. It's, it's, what were yours? Oh, I can't you remember, remember. Mine, no. yeah, they, they were, they were definitely you, right. Bart? I'll tell you after the race. 
Mine uh, were. I'll find them. It's a long week, hey? Yeah, it is a long week. <laughs> <laughs> we have to commentate all these races. So yeah. a lot of names crossing through my mind. I would, my predictions for the elite women's race would be either Yolanda Neff, she seems like she's on great fitness, or Sevilla Blanc. I have Luana Lecomte for the oh. women elite. Okay. Uh, She'll be up there. Men's well. race. Who do I have? I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm trying to find it now for you. <laughs> I think we, we, we have the same we people. We have the same, yeah, we have yeah, the same. Yeah, 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 we have the same people. We don't we know anymore who it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, Pitcock. Oh, yeah, Pitcock I have as well. Yeah, the Compton Pitcock. There is Samara yeah, Maxwell then. Many can win. And we will see later. We'll see if we're both right or both wrong. <laughs> it's kind of all or nothing <laughs> for us today, Bart. Samara Maxwell, fifth place then for the UCI World Champion. There's Blurtlinger. Trying to find some flow where yeah. flow looks like it's been good. washed away a long time ago, but that looked good. <laughs> it looked good. 37. The, the only thing that's flowing today is the water. Is that the river? Hillside. Yeah, that river's got a lot bigger this <laughs> overnight. To clean their bikes a little bit. Oh, see, this gap to Madigan Monroe from Blucklinger, the leader, has grown. A lot. Yeah, so Maddie was choosing to run some of those downhills, which is safe. For sure, it's, it's definitely a choice, and it seems to have cost her a little bit of time. Yes, I think especially in the downhills, if you start running over there, that costs yeah. a lot of time. And it takes a while to get yeah, the back, mud off your shoes. Yeah, and, yeah. On your bike, find your rhythm again. Yeah. And if you descend down these descents unclipped, there's nothing more terrifying. It's I mean, you dangerous. can yeah, so dangerous. And a lot of these riders have to do it. I mean, they'll they'll be one foot unclipped, and you're like, okay, I'm going for it. Yeah. There's no other option. At the risk of sounding really, really stupid in front of two international <laughs> experts, <laughs> is there any argument at all for running a shoe today that no. isn't a full carbon fiber lightweight cross country racing shoe, more like a trail shoe or an enduro shoe that has a bit of flex in the sole? I, I don't think so. No. Football boots. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the knobs they need to have these yeah. uh, today. <laughs> with one of the running. Yeah. 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 With do, you know, do you know what SPD. I'm trying to say though? They're so yes. difficult to run in. I mean, you. They are, yes. Now they make shoes with um, the rubber on the bottom, right? So they're not yeah. as slippery as they once were. And you almost, you know how to work with the carbon fiber soles. There are muddy races that I've literally am kicking my feet into the hillside, almost like it's a ski boot, right? To get traction. And you, I, the one change I may make is to make sure that I have um, two spikes on the two front. Two spikes, right? yeah, that might help. But yeah. sometimes it's like annoying to, to find your yeah. cleats. Yes. Yeah, when it, True. It's different. It getting, packs up more yeah, with the spikes. Is. Getting clipped back in the cross country pedals oh when the shoes and the pedals are full of mud is just a thankless task. But Ronja Blurtlinger, 42 seconds that's gone out wow. now to Monroe, so she's put the hurt on her. If I'm in Madigan Monroe's head and you're in second place and you're close to a World Cup win, it is so motivating. And you want to try to keep the energy relaxed because the moment that you get amped up in these conditions, you're, you're slipping, you're doing something. So you just want to try to stay smooth and in the position you are in, really, and try to close that gap. Well, Samara Maxwell, she's 1 minute 57 back now. So it's moving away from the UCI World Champion slightly. That progress seems to have halted. There is Blurtling at the race leader. Like we were talking earlier, you only almost have these muddy race experiences in a race. Right, so Samira yeah, Maxwell yeah. maybe not as experienced in these mud pits, racing amongst a mud pit all day long. And those, it's a subtle difference and that can add up to a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, you, you go out riding sometimes when it's muddy or when oh. it's raining, but not, not on, a, on a course like this. You're not going, yeah, this is a, a very annoying way of riding uh, off your bike, <laughs> on your bike. Uh, <laughs> Nobody I mean, goes out and does this for fun. It's not nice bar. at all, but <laughs> you only uh, see these conditions and these circumstances only in, in racing. You can see there how yeah. small the clipless style cross-country pedals are and getting those shoes that are filled with mud back onto them. Really, really difficult. So 
You have to say it, sounds cliched, but a real champion's ride from Blurt Linger today. And that yeah. if she was to finish this out, as we just see. That's a technical problem. Oh, yeah, chain one of the riders. For Sophie Heavy Patterson. Chain sack. Yeah, that. These I'm things guessing it's changed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was in 11th before that. We'll wait to see if she's lost any time before that. We really haven't seen much of her today. She's not having the best end to her year, but Blurtlinger, if she wins today, and again, Leah, it's a big if, <laughs> given the conditions out there, it will be her first cross-country Olympic win of the season wow. to take the UCI World Cup overall title, and that's pretty special, Bart. That's a nice way to finish the season. Yeah, it's taking a tough the, way to taking, do it, but... Taking the title and taking a win in the cross-country race. Unbeaten in short track, Ronja Blurtlinger this year. And now almost a gap a minute to One minute. Monroe. It looks way closer yeah. in, in this shot than it actually is. So, and it's it's important to say uh, out of sight, out of mind, right? So this is a section of the course, a big wide open climb where the riders can see each other. So they get way more motivated than if you can't see the rider in front of you. There's Madigan Monroe. Those glasses look foggy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. foggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't want to take them off because the moment you get a splat of mud in your eye, you literally can't see. No, and you can't no, clean yeah. it out with gloves that are covered in mud yeah. either. Yeah, and it hurts so much, especially yes. in, the, in the evening. Oh, yeah, you're sitting at dinner and you can't see your own soup. <laughs> <laughs> and these riders will wake up tomorrow morning with dirt sleepies yeah. in the corner oh, of their eyes. Horrible. I mean, it's... You call it dirt sleepies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good name for a band. <laughs> Ronja Blurtlinger <laughs> leads the way then. She is 57 seconds out front of Madigan Munro of Trek Factory Racing in a very, very wet, sticky, slippery, all things horrible, Mont Saint Anne in Quebec. UCI World Cup Finals cross country Olympic. For the only 23 women, and this woman on your screen now, Ronja Blurtlinger, is closing in on that overall title. This yeah. is what I'm talking about. Not Ronja Blurtlinger, not letting any mistakes get in her head. She's just keeping it moving forward, con consistently staying mentally tough, right? If she unclipped on this technical section, she's not, she's not worried about it going You can see as lap. well, just through that little right-hand berm section where she went into every single lap to begin mm. with, unclipping, feet up, straight around there without unclipping. So she's obviously finding her groove now, Blurtlinger. Yeah, she's, it seems to me she finds her rhythm as well on this course. Yeah. Even if it's yeah, such a hot course with such a hot conditions. Yeah, nearly impossible to find a rhythm, but, no, but she's somehow yeah. making it happen. The final lap, and she's crossing the finish line. Yeah, heading towards the last lap of her mountain bike World Cup season. Heads in the tech zone, Blurtlinger. Gets a drink. I think a lot of times success begins on the World Cup circuit and in careers in general in in the short track, right? Yeah. More can happen, more is possible in a shorter race like that. Gaps are closer. You could wind up in a lead pack all of a sudden for the first time and then get on the podium. And this progression we are seeing with our leader here today, she has had a perfect short track season and now she is moving that success from the short track, the confidence into a, a essentially what we're seeing a cross country win. She has one more lap to go. Uh, it's all about balancing that effort across the two races in the weekend as well, Bart, isn't it? No, but it's also, I mean, she, she, she starts from the first row, which yes. helps a lot too. I mean, it, it, yeah. instead of being on the fourth row on the, on the start grid. So immediately, at least the first lap, she's always in a good position. And from there on, a good performance and a good result starts. Yeah, it's everything to have a good start position at but the it World Cup. But, but I agree, it's, it all starts with a, a good short track race. Yes. And, and confident as well after that race. Yep. There is Ronja Blurtlinger. Look how wet it is out there. The rain continues to fall. But now these riders want it to keep raining because as soon as it stops, it turns into this mucky mess. Yeah, you can see how clean the tires are yeah. actually having I mean, just actually, come through there. Yeah, the bikes are not that dirty at all. That's because there's so much water out there. <laughs> it's only water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you it's, it's, it's not real clay, it's not no. not sticky. You don't want to be lugging around an extra four kilos yeah, of mud on your bike. Sometimes it's this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were worried that that might be in effect in the downhill yesterday after it started raining early, then it stopped, but it actually, the track soaked it all up. Great day of racing. 
But all focus on cross country Olympic here today. Fine. And Final lap for Madigan Monroe, Madigan Monroe second place. Out onto the last lap of the race, a minute and five seconds behind Bronya Blocklinger, who leads and is riding herself towards the title. But these two set to do battle. Burry versus Halter, boiling up nicely on the last lap of the year. Another two Swiss riders. Madigan Monroe surviving in a big Swiss sandwich here. Yeah. And I'm just wondering now, if these two left the pace when they're fighting each other, they could head back towards Monroe, who's only 15 seconds up yeah, the road. Yeah, not that much, 15 seconds only. Yeah, it could go either way. I mean, if yeah, one of them in front is, makes yeah. a mistake, right, they, get, they knock each other out of the rhythm, or if they are battling just for third, you know, then that plays to Madigan Monroe's advantage. You can see the rain on the shot there as these two head up this climb for the last time. Ronja Blertlinger leads them by one minute and five seconds. Then it's Monroe, then it's Burry on your screen now in the white. Then it's Halter who moves past her. Samara Maxwell is two minutes now behind, so she's moving backwards time-wise. Hmm. UCI world champion from New Zealand. Ryder who's really lit up the second half of this season from UCI Worlds backwards, really. But there you can see what it takes. Great shots. Yeah. Look at that rain coming down. Well, Bart, we said it a few times, you win titles on your tough days, and she's literally going to do that yeah, today, yeah, yeah. Ronya Blurtlinger, yeah. if she can keep this moving. She won the short track last Thursday, it was, for these categories. Best we've seen of Halter as well, by a strong way. This season, Ronja Blertlinger gets to run up this switchback climb for the last time. And she's in for the double. She's in for the double, yeah. And taking the title. It's not bad. That's a great weekend. <laughs> I would take it. It's not bad. I, yeah, you do some running You do some running to get that one. Oh, yeah. for sure. In carbon fiber salt shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but Ronja Blertlinger, and it's that consistency that really, similar to what we saw from Alessandra Keller really last year when mm. she took that overall pair of titles was it was the consistency that paid off at the end of the year everybody else took yeah. points off each other took wins yeah. off each other and she was just a constant but also the strength in short track racing you see them just raking the the ruts just at the Whoa. bottom of that climb i've never seen that before bart yeah they were maintaining the the the, the course a little bit after the start that little ramp where they immediately have to put some gravel on it just before the race of uh, the, the 23. But now, the yeah, during the race as well they try to Make it a little bit better. It's just gravel soup down there at the minute, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it helps that much. It would take a lot of gravel. I mean, truck loads yeah. of gravel <laughs> to make this course dry right now. Oh, and Madigan Monroe just hanging on, hanging on in this last lap. Yeah. She has two very strong even riders the, chasing her. Even the temperature dropped down, only 10 degrees. I like the way we're getting confirmation of the Weller rain <laughs> there on the last lap. In Ten, case you were wondering. Yeah, 10 degrees outside. It does feel colder, though, with the wind. Yeah, and also the, uh, the rain, the wet conditions, it makes it so much colder for the riders. There's Madigan Monroe just remounting that track. Yeah, no, well, Burry's not, not that far off. No, we didn't wonder if they would come back together. Looks like she's dropped Halter a bit. And Burry will see Monroe now. And as you both have attested to, that's crucial. Yeah. Halter looks like a spent force now. 15 seconds it was at the finish line. Halter was looking the strongest, actually, at the beginning of this lap, but maybe burned those matches too early. She tried an attack. And now we have a counter-attack from there Noel Burns. There is Samara Maxwell, the Kiwi. The world champion. The world champion who's really made herself a household name. Oh, she's looking good on this yeah, climb. That's what I think, too. She's looking very strong, like way more peppy energy than the rider, all the riders in front of her. She's so low over the bike, doesn't she, Samara Maxwell? Really unique style. Different style, she has. She's riding this, too. She's yeah. ridden that whole thing it's in the last lap, Samara points. Maxwell. Well, are they all going to come back together here on the last lap in Mont saint -Anne? That's Sina Van Thiel from Germany, the German champion. More problems for her on this climb. Van Thiel's been good today, though, Bart. Yes. Really, really strong. Strong performance. Genia Colore behind her. There is Ronja Blertlinger. Just a little bobble at the top of that one. She's looking forward to get it, wrapping this race up. I mean, to make it to the finish line. Oh, and look at that gap now. Four Only... seconds. Yeah, that is not I a think, lot. I think if this was me, I would be sending a representative to 
to the podium for me. I would not be. <laughs> I would be getting warm and dry, and that would be it. Yeah, I saw Bjorn Riley heading to the podium. He was fully shivering. Yeah. Fully. yeah but, uh, um, Adrian Brasi too, when he had to uh, take the title, the, the, the well, trophy for the title, he was <laughs> definitely in cold. <laughs> Noel Burry has just got past Madigan Monroe. The so, battle for the second place. Second place is still alive. Oh, this is coming down to it. Yeah. If I'm Madigan right now, I'm just saying hang on her wheel because you never know. Anything can happen. It's not over till it's over, especially in conditions like this. Fair play to Noel Burry. This has been a long, long fight to get back to that second place, but she's done it. And now she's trying to put some daylight between herself and the U.S. national champion Madigan Monroe, currently in third. Yeah, she's attacking yeah, Madigan de right definitely now. Definitely Ronja Blocklingo, the fastest at the moment. Much faster than everyone else. A horrible, horrible feeling from Madigan Monroe. The alarm bells are ringing. There's not much grip to get from the rear wheel, but she has to catch Burry, who is off and pedaling. Yeah, she, now she's dabbing, so it's really anyone's race. There is that catch, but we need to see what's happened on that climb. See, it's so frustrating to be in Maddie's <laughs> position because you go, I have second wrapped up, right? And then oh. just, oh. Blurtlinger just having the trials balance almost on the top of that rock. Wow. That Liv wanted to go left and she needed it to go right. But she made it without any problems. I thought for a second there, the, yeah, the picture yeah. had paused. I, was, <laughs> I couldn't really understand what I was seeing. But, oh, Burry in trouble on this descent. There we and go. here comes Monroe on foot. Yeah, Maddie it's, committing. It's equal in time, huh? Yeah, committing to the run. And she's staying with it, and she's right on the back of her. Blurtlinger is now off and running. The two of them are 59 seconds behind the Swiss woman who leads this one, has done since the start. It's not often we see attacks and then a counterattack running, mm. right? <laughs> Trying to close the gap, so. Yeah, but on this course, here in Monsenland with these conditions, none of this it's today almost makes it impossible to make it on your bike. Yeah. None Wondering of this today man, makes a whole lot of sense. If the men can do it. I, I, even I think the men have to ride to run here. Oh, for absolutely. Berry I mean, tips in. The U23 men, we saw them running many sections, especially as the, their race wore on and the course is just getting worse yeah. and worse. The elite men are going to hit this course right at the end of its life, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be, be far gone. It's going to be a Mike Tyson solid left hook to the side of the head for this course, I think, be, by the time they hit it. It might be a zombie crawl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's taking her time. Wow. Blurtlinger. She's just pausing to compose herself yeah, 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 almost. Yeah, yeah. In the right clever, position. Just clever riding. Stop. Not rushing into stuff. She's finding that grass on the side Get, of the course. Getting the, the one tires patch left. Getting the tires cleaned off. As we look back at the battle for a second, then Burry still riding. Yeah, short inside line for Madigan Monroe. That battle for a second will come down to who may, makes the least mistakes and the costly mistakes. Blurt Everyone's making mistakes. Blurtlinger. Sliding. And is that part of it, Leah? You've got to be just comfortable making mistakes and just... Totally. And, and just recovering from them, right, very quickly. And these riders are max. I mean, you can see Maddie just almost tripping, right? You're, <laughs> you're cramping. They're yeah, also not pushing too much pressure to each other. I mean, they're both running here, but which is smart, I think. Yeah. Instead of taking too many risks yeah. and, and go over the bars. But your legs, I can't emphasize enough, your arms are barely working at the end of a World Cup. I know, and you, your brains. Yeah, and your brain is definitely not working. I mean, you're just trying to see your lines, you're trying to take deep breaths and hold on to those bars, really. I've had last laps of a World Cup where I'm collapsing. Yeah. Like, my arms are collapsing when you take these big impacts. And as we say, you're on the brakes a lot more in the wet, and that just adds to the arm pump. The lactic acid can't clear your arms, makes things even more complicated. Ronja Blurtlinger chances a look over her right hand shoulder. It's looking good for her. She's maybe just getting her eyes out of the rain for a second, but Noel Burry currently second still by 50 seconds. She's three seconds ahead of Madigan Monroe as we join the descent. Huh. Where is Monroe? Is what we need to see, that big rut at the bottom of that. Essentially, you want to hit that right to get you exited back out onto this flatter section. Second Where is place, Monroe? There's Monroe. The third place. Great shot that from the drone. Give us an idea of that gap on the track as it stands. And the, the last loop of this course is essentially a big part of the short track course, right? So this could come down to tactics. 
it's not so much technical, it's the one non-technical, quote-unquote, section and of also this the course. also the Ridge is the best rideable at the moment. Almost no mud on that uh, short track course. Exactly. Still some, maybe some slippery corners, these, these uh, yeah, wide corners. Yeah. Inside maybe a bit slippy, but still good rideable. Here we are, the final lap then of the UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 women, and it's coming down to an absolute battle for second place. Ronja Blertlinger has been absolutely peerless out front all race long, but it's now Noel Berry versus Madigan Monroe for just four seconds between them as they head out on the final part of the final lap of the yeah, year. One more climb to come for yeah. Ronja Blocklinger. And has to be said as well, we've got two trips down that big long start finish straight. Tarmac, plenty of grip, plenty of time to close gaps. Whereas you can just see Burry just the bottom of your shot there. That's what it looks like. Exactly. If Maddie can remain in contact in striking distance to Noel Burry, then it could come down to a sprint. She could close that gap on those long, the long back stretch and then the uh, start finish straight. But the gap is is growing, I believe. I mean, she can still yeah. see her. It could come down to this last Same climb. 10 seconds. That's the no. difference. Yep. Same 10 seconds. Does Madigan Monroe have the legs left on this last climb to close that gap? Well, you can't take anything away from her. She's been so impressive today. But Noelle yes. Burry, for Bix's performance race team, has just really come good towards the end of this one. But there is your leader, Blertlinger, on her way to win her first UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup of the season handily. That win will deliver her the overall title if she can get this to the line as she heads past the back marker. Yeah, the number 36, that's the back marker. The number 36 of Leah Druel. Oh, another Leah. I know. <laughs> There's not too many Ricks or not too many Barts out there, so we're glad we've got one of us out there. <laughs> yeah. But Monroe third for the time being, then nine seconds. But. This woman will just be focusing on getting that live home and not having to look at it for a few days, I think, after this one. And she will bring it back home. Smallest gear for her here on this last climb of the race. Ronja Blertlinger undefeated in cross-country short track this year in the World Cups. And all the points won from there have contributed. Monique Halter still in fourth place. Towards this title. Halter still fourth. And I think Samara Maxwell, she's on fifth place. There is second place, Noel Burry, 39 seconds behind Blertlinger. Two Swiss riders riding away with it. I love this last climb. You can see everyone right in front of in you. In one shot. <laughs> yeah. There's Monroe. That's great. It just comes down to guts, really. And who wants it more on these last laps of a World Cup? And Madigan Monroe, again, the whole race in second place. And then the last lap, Noel Purdy yeah. passes her. It's so frustrating. And it just shows that oh, it, oh yeah, she's a little dab. Oh, taking, a, taking a dab there. She knows that this could still go very, very wrong through here. Can, is she going to have enough speed? I mean, you're going to need to be in the right gear now, to get a couple of to, pedal uh, strokes. Hurry up a little bit for yeah. that gap. Ooh. Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Guess that, one, that one makes me nervous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it looks so easy from here. But yeah. In real next to it's it, a if big you gap. stay next to it, it's it's a big gap. Yeah, yeah. The good thing is, is that the takeoff is Take -off higher is good, yes. than the landing, right? And it has a little kick to it, so you've as got you an insurance see, policy. Yeah. Yes. You can even carry slower speed than you would think. But you do have to be in the right gear to, in order to get a couple of hard pedal strokes in to ensure some speed to make it over that river gap. There is Madiga Monroe. Yep. She looks good. She looks strong. Top place, Fast can here. Top place Canadian at the minute, Emily Johnson in 10th for Trek Future Racing. She needs to take, take risks on this last descent to, in order to close that gap. Less than 10 seconds it was. That's a back marker. Yeah, this is the lap rider, so. Let's just have a look at what the gaps are going to say through this next split. Blertlinger won't care about the splits now.
heading down through this big bermed out section. 31 seconds, the gap back to Bury. Blurtlinger incredibly has piled the pressure on late in this race. Monroe now 49 seconds back, so 18 yeah, behind Bury. Wow. What a ride from the well, Bury. Really, really setting fire to the second half of this race. On the, the last lap, yeah, really. A strong, a strong last lap for her. Yeah, never give up. Well, ton of strong last laps. This woman has had a very, very strong last round. But Madigan Monroe too. I mean, strong ride for her yeah. today. Third place, podium spot. Yeah, such a strong ride for Madigan. That's a great way to end the season with yep. a podium or a win because it makes you so motivated going into the off season, which is long, right? There's a celebration from Blurtlinger. She heads past the Live Factory <laughs> Racing Garage. Who says, we are not worthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the title. The, the title. The, the short, the track country, title. short track. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, it's just, Man. She's done so much winning in short track, but also to get your first cross-country Olympic win right when it mattered the most. As an athlete, that's just next level. there. she's been great in 2023. She's about to round it off with a win to clinch a title. It doesn't get much better than that in terms of fairy tales. Look at the smile now. <laughs> she can celebrate. Ronya Blurtlinger has been absolutely unstoppable in the mud of Mont Saint Anne. Ronya Blurtlinger takes her first UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup of the Year, and crucially, it's the result that clinches her the overall title to boot. Just reward for a woman who has been unbelievably consistent throughout this season. She saw off massive challenges all around her and she's taken the title but this woman Noel Burry absolutely scintillating at the last round she'll hit head into the off season full of confidence Burry really really strong for Bixis performance race team that team of Lucas Flugiger behind her Madigan Monroe it was a brave second place for so long but she's happy with third it's a podium at the last UCI World Cup of the Year, and the American national champion will snap that one up. Behind her, Holter crosses the line. Another great, great performance. And just in the under as in the under 23 men's race part, we've seen a really different mixture of racers coming through with these tricky conditions. It is, yeah. You need to uh, be strong in these conditions. You need to have the skills. Riding down very fast, climbing on the, these steep climbs with less traction. A good bike setup, but also yeah, you have to get used to conditions like these the cold, the rain, and the slippery parts on the course. And Leah, it does mean a little bit more when the conditions are this tough, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. You know, if you can survive and not only survive, thrive in these conditions, you're one of the best mountain bike racers in the world. And this race coming back together, as we saw in the U23 men's race, right? Madigan Monroe holds off Halter by only four seconds. Nothing. On that. Absolutely That's nothing. That's nothing. That's a blink of an eye. Yeah, a lot of changes all the time in the last few laps. In the Especially positions when and you also consider, in timing. Yeah, you consider that four second gap, how much time was spent off the bikes and running and slipping and sliding. There is the UCI world champion. Well, not the results she came here for today, but Samara Maxwell will be happy. I think she will take the second place in the overall standings. Yeah, second wow. place in the overall. It depends what uh, Sophie Peter Hebelsen does. Well, we course. have her in 12th on our screen, so we'll need to get the abacus out. That's the difference. Ronya, what a way to round off your season. Your first Olympic win here, and you've just claimed the overall. What's going through your mind right now? Yeah, that was a really nice race. Actually, I really like to ride in the mud. But I don't like to clean my bike, but I am a lucky one because I have one of the best mechanic, Drew Dokken. And yeah, also big, big thanks to him. He did an amazing job and the whole team behind the scene, also Liz Walker, my team manager. I, I have such a good team and I'm so happy to finally have a XO win. The conditions were so tough out there. How did you have to adapt this morning? Were there any last minute changes to the tires, to the shoes? 
Yeah, we montated really good uh, mud tires, but yeah, all the trainings the last day were on the dry course and it's really fun <laughs> because the rain just started yesterday evening, so nobody knew how it will be exactly and yeah, it's just cool that I could ride all my lines, yeah. You've been positive all week about this race. When you saw the weather coming, I know you're actually really looking forward to it. How important is it to keep that positive mentality? Yeah, I think in a mountain bike race, it's so much about the mental part. Um, yeah, and the season is already really long. I'm also a bit tired in the head right now, but now I have off season. <laughs> so I'm really happy to put the bike uh, in the corner for some weeks and do some other stuff. But yeah, cool race. And is there anything you can tell us about next season? Where are we going to be seeing you? Yeah, next season I am uh, in the first year uh, in the elite category and I'm so excited to race against all the big names then and looking forward to it. Fantastic news, well done. Thank you very much. Well, fair play to Ashley Wilmot. She's got the hand of, she's got the hand goal on the, the scoops down there today. Ronja Blertlinger joining the elite level category next season. So by our calculations, it will be Sophie Heavy Patterson who remains in second in the overall. After that 12th place finish. 11th, sorry, excuse me, on our screens. So, Samara Maxwell, I think she would have bitten your arm off if you would have said UCI World Champion, third in the UCI World Cup overall at the start of this year. Noelle Burry, superb performance from her. Take absolutely nothing away from this worst woman. She grind that one out. There is Pedersen crossing the line then. Somewhat dejectedly, but her year's work is done. The European Continental Champion. 11th place for her today, for the Dean. Sophia Patterson then will take second place in the UCI World Cup overall standings after that one. Not the form she started the year in, but still good enough for second in the world in the European Continental title as well. As the weather continues to swirl around this part of Quebec. Here is confirmation of the results then. Ronya Plertlinger, Noel Bury, Madigan Monroe, Monique Halter and Samara Maxwell are your top five. And it was Van Teel, Kaluri, Holubova, Shusinska and Viedman. Well, let's hear from Noel Bury. She's down there now. Wow, what a fight it was for second place today, but you managed it with that last minute overtake and the conditions, they weren't easy out there. Yeah, uh, in the last lap I was in the fourth place and I won this podium so badly because it's my last race in the under 23 category and yeah, it's amazing that I could do it this. How did you have to change up the strategy when you saw what you're up against today? Uh, yeah, I just think, okay, just ride and let the bike go, so <laughs> yeah. Great to finish the season with a podium as well. Yes, really. Fantastic news, well done. Thanks. Noel Berry, happy with that one. There you can see, crucially though, tyres looking pretty clear, so definitely no shortage of moisture out there in Mont Saint Anne. Always a tough place to finish the year. Always at its toughest when the heavens open. You can see just how tough it is from those slow motion images. Ronja Blertlinger then takes the UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 women by 137 points ahead of Sophie Heavy Patterson. Samara Maxwell's third, Noel Burry fourth after that incredibly impressive result. Junior Kaluri was fifth, Madigan Monroe sixth, 
Sina Fan Tail, Emily Johnson, Noemi Garnier, Sarah Cortanova. So plenty of points grabbed at the final round there to cement some positions. Great to see. Well, we're getting them all rounded up for the podium ceremonies. You can see just how miserable the conditions are here today. Wherever you are, hope you've got your feet up. Nice warm cup of coffee, maybe even something stronger to enjoy the last days cross-country racing of the year from the UCI World Cup. Wind picking up now a bit here in Mont Saint Anne, which was kind of the missing final element of horribleness in terms of conditions. But as we've said all day, there's a certain breed of rider will be loving this. Madigan, what an exciting race, especially for the fans. Great to see you place on the podium today. But talk me through it because there's lots of dismounts, lots of mounts. I mean, you're off the bike more than you're on it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was such a hectic race out there. I mean, one of those races where the most important thing is just to keep moving, whether it's running or riding. So if you feel yourself getting stalled up, you just get off and run, honestly. How much did you have to adapt your setup to manage this, th these conditions? I mean, I probably changed my tire choice three times before the race, but luckily my teammate Riley just raced before and had an amazing race. So I took his advice on tire choice and it ended up working out perfect for me. Great to finish the season on the podium. What's next for you? Um, now I will head to Pan Am Games in Chile in two weeks um, with one of my teammates, Gwendolyn Gibson. And after that, I'll be taking some time off the bike. Well, good luck and enjoy the rest. Thank you very much. Well, Marika Munro, job not quite done for the year, but big, big result today. Pushed her up that overall standings. Munro, superb today. Just pipped by Noel Burry on that last lap. Whisper it, there's a bit of sunshine out there, but plenty of rain and wind alongside it. Well, we're getting ready to go racing here with the elite level cross country riders. It's wet, it's muddy, it's Mont Saint Anne. Don't go anywhere.